If you're like me, then one of the greatest pleasures is to see a new interstate highway being designed, built, and completed in your lifetime. A couple of the newest interstates in America are Interstate 73 and Interstate 74. These are very popular topics of discussion among road enthusiasts, geeks, nerds, or whatever you want to call them. But today, I'm here to tell you that these highways will never be built outside of North Carolina and why. But first, let me welcome you back to the channel. My name is Knowledge Mike. I am a frequent traveler, engineer, and geography enthusiast. On this channel, we are literally going everywhere. We're going to see these places and we're going to talk about it. Go ahead and hit that like for me and if you really enjoy it, don't hesitate to subscribe as well. Now back to 73 and 74. These two routes were authorized by Congress under the Intermodal Surface Transportation Efficiency Act of 1991. I-73 was to take this routing from Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, passing through Ohio, West Virginia, Virginia, and North Carolina along its path. I-74 is slightly different in that there is already an existing section of I-74 in the Midwest that proposed I-74 in the South would theoretically connect to in the future. As we can see here on this map, a general idea of where the route would go. Remember earlier where I said that these roads were authorized for construction in 1991? Well, now it's 2022, and the only state that has spent money to build these two highways after 31 years has been North Carolina. Which is ironic, considering that in North Carolina, they only serve to add two more freeways to its third largest metro, giving Greensboro, Winston-Salem more freeway miles per capita than both Raleigh and Charlotte, despite them being larger and growing much faster. Good job, North Carolina. These interstates also connect the major cities of Asheboro and Rockingham, which we all know are known for their heavy congestion and were in dire need of some traffic relief. Or maybe North Carolina figured, since we put our zoo in the middle of nowhere, that we can encourage more people to visit if we gave it a freeway. Now, after Rockingham, I-74 does continue in a piecemeal fashion along the US-74 corridor as an actually useful route connecting Charlotte to Wilmington. However, this route didn't necessarily need to be a signed interstate, especially not I-74. Something like I-38 would have been fitting as this corridor is part of North Carolina's future dream of an interstate between Asheville and Wilmington. To date, North Carolina has spent billions of dollars on construction between these two highways. That spending has resulted in a continuous rural freeway between Greensboro and Rockingham, a partially completed loop around Winston-Salem, an interstate connecting Winston-Salem and High Point with Asheboro, a bypass of Summerfield, North Carolina, a suburb of Greensboro, an interstate connection between the Pilot Mountain Parkway and I-77 near Mount Airy, and a piecemeal interstate highway between Rockingham and Wilmington. Now, let's take a look at what the other states have done in regards to these highways, and you'll see why they will never be built. We'll start with South Carolina. South Carolina is the most interesting of the bunch outside of North Carolina. Myrtle Beach is one of the largest and fastest growing metros in the country without interstate access, and many business leaders from the area have been pushing for I-73 to be constructed in the area. The proposed routing of I-73 and I-74 actually has both of them ending in Myrtle Beach, with I-74 having a bizarre change of heart right before entering Wilmington that it will give its love to Myrtle Beach instead. But do we really think North Carolina will spend money to divert an interstate away from its own coastal city and towards Myrtle Beach? So for all intents and purposes, we can go ahead and knock out the idea of I-74 being built in South Carolina because Wilmington and North Carolina are not having it. So instead, let's focus on I-73 in South Carolina. To their credit, South Carolina has spent money on various planning and engineering studies related to I-73. They have shown the most interest in possibly building this highway of any state outside of North Carolina. They even have a preliminary routing that will take this highway through economically depressed counties such as Dillon, Marion, and Marlboro. For all the crying I've seen in various forums and YouTube videos about induced demand, South Carolina is indeed hoping to induce a lot of demand with this highway if it ever gets built. South Carolina politicians have even expressed commitment and enthusiasm towards I-73 on various occasions, with Senator Lindsey Graham saying in 2021 that I-73 is one of the most game-changing infrastructure projects in our state. And this bold statement from South Carolina Governor McMaster stating that if we seize the moment by thinking big, being bold, and making transformative investments, I believe we can change South Carolina's future 
for the better. I can think of nothing more transformative than the state committing the first 300 million to kickstart this critical project. It is my hope that this commitment will serve as a catalyst for our local government partners to finalize their investment plans and will strengthen the position of our congressional delegation as they work to secure federal funds so that we can finally make I-73 a reality. However, despite such supportive statements, after 31 years, not a shovel has been dispatched, not a grain of soil has been moved, nor a construction date announced for any part of I-73 in the Palmetto State. In April of this year, when it was time for South Carolina politicians to put their money where their mouth is, I-73 was struck down yet again. The efforts by three Horry County lawmakers to divert billions in proposed tax cuts or rebates from the state budget to other investments such as I-73 were voted down by the state Senate, led by Senate Finance Chair Harvey Piller of Cherokee County. Senators Stephen Goldfinch, Luke Ranking, and Greg Hemry attempted to push for road funding that Governor Henry McMaster himself appropriated for in his executive budget. Billions and billions and billions got to other parts of the state, says Senator Hembry before the Senate. Horry County, one of the biggest counties in the state, now has some of the most challenging infrastructure needs in the entire state. And the big project never happens. So with the budget surplus, South Carolina still voted against funding for I-73. Now the other issue with I-73 in South Carolina is priority. South Carolina is widely known as a state with poor quality highways. This was likely due to the very low state gas tax in the past, which has since been increased. South Carolina sees, and rightfully so, other existing interstates as higher priorities than I-73. I-95 between the I-26 junction and the Georgia state line has some of the most crushing traffic backups in the state. I-26 between Columbia and the 95 junction is also in the same boat. Together, these two highways are very cramped, with only two lanes on each side, and rank among the most dangerous in the state. When traveling between North Carolina and Florida, I can personally tell you guys that I always see a wreck on one or both sides of I-26 between Columbia and I-95. South Carolina has recently committed $600 million to these highways in hopes to have I-95 at six lanes by 2030 and zero lanes for I-73. Then there's also I-85 in the fast-growing South Carolina upstate. South Carolina is currently in the process of widening this area to the North Carolina state line as it handles a massive amount of traffic and is the South's most important highway, connecting South Carolina with Atlanta, Charlotte, Raleigh-Durham, and the Northeast. With these factors at play and the I-73 can being continuously kicked down the road, I can't see a scenario where I-73 exists in South Carolina in the next several decades, if ever. At best, you can expect to see future I-73 signs in the region. But hey, at least they spent something, right? Next on the list is Virginia. In Virginia, I-73 is expected to follow the US-220 corridor from the North Carolina state line up to Roanoke to I-81. From there, it is to create a wrong way concurrency with I-81 down to US-460 near Christiansburg, where it will hop on to 460 and follow that route to the West Virginia state line. On my channel, I've driven this stretch up to Roanoke, and there are indeed some future I-73 signs along US-220 and the existing I-581 spur. However, there is no mention of the highway on I-81, nor did I see any along 460 on my trip to Blacksburg. So in theory, it seems that at some point Virginia expects this highway to at least make it to Roanoke. As for I-74, the proposed routing would just follow the existing interstates. I-74 would enter the state with I-77 from North Carolina, and hop along for the ride up to Whiteville and continue on north to the West Virginia state line. So for I-74 to exist in Virginia, it would only be a matter of adding this signage to existing freeways. However, Virginia has not even bothered to do this, nor has it posted any future signage of I-74. Basically, we can conclude that I-74 is a non-starter for Virginia and that they have zero interest in the highway. So let's get back to I-73. Like South Carolina, leaders in Southwest Virginia are looking to I-73 as a way to help induce some demand in this sluggish part of the state. The issue of I-73 being built here is also an issue of priorities. You see, in Virginia, the priority list goes Nova, that's Northern Virginia, Richmond, Hampton Roads, then everyone else. So when the money gets doled out, if there are any scraps left, Southwest Virginia might get a few slices of great value bologna, but it will never get the gourmet steak. Now I can't say that Virginia DOT is wrong for this, a recent planned bypass of Martinsville possibly connecting I-73 to North Carolina is estimated to cost a whopping $600 million alone. 
with such a price tag for this segment and Northern Virginia being infinitely more important to the Virginia economy, I can't say that it's a bad idea to keep pushing I-73 down the road. As for the section from Blacksburg to the West Virginia line, looking at the terrain, it's safe to say that this will not be a freeway in any of our lifetimes. Next up is West Virginia. Like the other states, I-73 and I-74 are highways that political and business leaders are hoping will induce some demand. West Virginia in particular is one of the poorest states in the union and has been struggling to find a new industry and source of economic development since the decline of King Cole. In West Virginia, I-73 is expected to enter the state along US-460, continuing westward to Bluefield, where it will then hop onto the current US-52 to the Huntington area and then head north into Ohio. It is assumed that the theoretical I-74 will enter along I-77 from Virginia and reunite with I-73 as they head to Huntington and the Ohio State Line together once again. On my travels into West Virginia along I-77, like Virginia, there was absolutely zero mention of I-74 anywhere in the state. In fact, I don't recall seeing I-73 mentioned either, but admittedly, I haven't had a chance to travel along the US-52 corridor in the state just yet. I was, however, able to locate these documents from the West Virginia DOT concerning what they call the King Cole Highway. This highway appears to cover what would be the southern portion of the I-73, I-74 corridor through the state. So you might ask, Mike, if West Virginia DOT has internal documents showing the highways, why do you say they won't be built? Well, I'm glad you asked. There are two reasons for this. One, the cost. The estimated cost according to state officials for just this southern section of the King Cole Highway are a whopping $1.6 billion. That is a lot of coin even for a more successful state, but even more devastating for a poorer state like West Virginia. The other problem, parts of the King Cole Highway are being built as a two-lane road. West Virginia spending money on this highway and it only being two lanes pretty much confirms that there will be no I-73 or I-74 in the state unless West Virginia decides to throw them on the existing I-77, I-64 corridors to push them through the state. Or Congress has a change of heart and starts investing way more money into infrastructure. And of course, we all know that here in America, we have more important things to spend money on. But I digress. On to the great state of Ohio. In Ohio, I-73 and I-74 are proposed to enter the state at some point in the Huntington, West Virginia area, crossing the Ohio River, likely along the existing US-52. I-74 would separate near Portsmouth and head towards a connection with the existing I-74 in Cincinnati while I-73 would head due north to Columbus, bisect the city, yeah right, then continue northward to join I-75 on its journey to Toledo and the Michigan State Line. There has been little movement on either of the highways in Ohio so far. The most recent mention was a resolution passed earlier this year by state representatives to urge Ohio Governor Mike DeWine to provide funding for the highways in hopes to induce some demand and stimulate the economy of the areas near the proposed route. As expected, this resolution was a non-starter. However, it did show that the idea of these highways in the state is not completely dead. It's just not happening this decade, next decade, nor the one after that. 2050, maybe. In Michigan, I-73 is proposed to follow the existing US-223 and US-127 corridors, heading north through Lansing, reconnecting with I-75, in the northern part of the state and riding along with it to the Canadian border in Sault Ste. Marie. Boy, I-73 sure does like to tag along with other interstates, huh? Much of US-127 is already a freeway, though some parts may not quite meet interstate standards. But even with this, Michigan has already decided that it has zero interest in signing or building the highway in the state. Michigan has invested zero dollars, zero time, and doesn't plan to either. As far as we know, I-73 in Michigan is a complete non-starter for all intents and purposes, and it is dead on arrival. All right, guys, those are my thoughts on why I don't think we will ever see these mythical interstates outside of North Carolina. South Carolina seems to want it, but just can't find the money and willpower to get it done. Virginia has higher priorities. West Virginia is poor and broke. Ohio has little to no interest, and Michigan said, get out of my face with your silly I-73. Do any of you guys think We'll see I-73 or I-74 outside of North Carolina in our lifetimes. Let me know in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next trip coming soon to a town near you.